Michelle Markey with Medina Domestic Arts Studio. And I was uh, recently at a quilt show and had a couple of questions regarding fabric markers. Uh, in my opinion, fabric markers are absolutely the easiest thing to use, particularly when you have a very detailed pattern such as this. Um, I also recommend it for absolute newbies as I think it's just so, so simple to use them that they, they kind of have an instant gratification uh, feel to them. So what I'd like to do on this little doxy here is do a little bit of coloring and show you some tips and tricks on how to color with them as well as how to blend. And uh, some of you may be noticing that I've got a little bit of fabric medium here in my uh, palette. And yes, I'm going to show you how to use fabric medium with fabric markers as well. But let's just start off with the basics first. Um, I'm going to come in here to this little area right here and I'm going to do kind of a rainbow effect and I'm going to start, I have all my little Arteza markers. Uh, now I've done several videos on product reviews. Uh, there's really kind of a, a several different fabric markers that I can recommend. Arteza uh, is one of them. They are available at Joann's, Amazon, and actually through the Arteza website. The other ones that I like to recommend are Fabricos, spelled F-A-B-R-I-C-O. They're made with Sukuniko ink. I believe I have a video out on my website and on my YouTube channel regarding Fabrico markers. They are what I consider to be the Cadillac of all fabric markers. And then there's a ton of various different Chinese knockoffs. When people ask me my opinion about them, all I can tell you is, is just give them a try and then test them for their washability. It's the same process no matter what kind of fabric marker you're using. You just color, let it dry, heat set it, and then throw it in a sink full of water, soapy water, and you're going to be able to see right off the bat whether or not those markers are in fact waterproof and washable. There are a ton of other markers out there. I'm not going to get into discussion about alcohol markers or the like. Right now, I want to just stay focused on fabric markers for this video. So again, taking the very easiest and the lightest first. Now, this is this is a this is why I like these. They've got a small tip, and they have a large tip. And let's start out with a large tip first. As I do with my pencils, I always like to kind of start in the middle and then work towards the stitch line. I do kind of go over and overlap the various different um, colors as I'm coloring in a section, and I push the tip right along the stitch line so that I get all that color in there. All right, very easy, very straightforward. In fact, you could do this entire dog like that if you wanted. But let's be a little clever here. And on the next one, I'm going to pull out, actually, I'm looking for marmalade, which is kind of a, a, a pale orange yellow. And I'm going to keep my apricot close by. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to color with my marmalade. And you can see it's kind of a very nice pale orange looking color. But then just as soon as I'm finished, I'm picking up my apricot with the small end and I'm going to make just kind of a outline while the ink is still wet and it gives it kind of a nice two-dimensional effect with two different colors. Let me repeat that one more time now using apricot as the next color. So we'll put this down. Now you need to do this while the ink is still wet and you have usually a very short time to do this. Uh, fabric markers do tend to dry very quickly, and so you need to work pretty quick yourself if you're going to try to achieve this effect. Now, I've just picked up tangerine, so I'm just kind of coming in here and putting a little outline around there, and it, again, gives it kind of a nice artsy effect. Uh, now, some of you, and in fact, I saw this at the quilt show, said, oh, well, what can I do about you know, blending that and getting that line. Ah, this is why I have the fabric mark uh, medium out. You can dip your brush into the fabric medium and come in immediately 
and kind of go over while it's still wet. Again, you're, you only have a couple of, maybe even a minute at most. But if you can get the fabric medium down while everything's still wet, you can see that that blends out very nicely. It's not necessary to have the fabric medium, but that way you can use it as a blending tool. Now, one of the things that I do see happening, it is actually bleeding into the next color. But this is the other reason I kind of like fabric uh, markers. You can actually work that and, and actually kind of blend that color out. Unlike pencil that tends to really run into each other pretty pretty intensely. Uh, while it's still wet, you can, you can work it out and there's going to be very little re re residue left. Okay. With that, let me move over here um, where I was working earlier. <clears throat> and I laid a little bit of bubblegum down. And bubblegum is just a very light pink. And I'm going to do it one more time around here. And then we're going to try another blending technique. So I'm going to just come in here, kind of over color where I've already colored. I'm just going to do these, these top three. Uh, you can tell where I've gone because I've actually gone, or four here, I've actually gone on top of the little yellow center, and that way I know that they're already colored a second time. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up, mm, I want actually kind of a more, let's see what I have here. I think I'm looking for a flamingo. Okay, flamingo is a very kind of fluorescent -y pink. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to start from the top, and work down into the bubblegum pink, okay? Now immediately, just like I did earlier, grab my brush. Let me see if I can locate it here, here we go. And I'm just gonna come in and put a little fabric medium over that so that those two colors blend. Now, isn't that nice? So there is there is a way to use fabric medium with fabric markers. It does act as a blending tool for them. And let me do this one as well. You will need to work each individual petal as you work. So you can't go around and, and color them all pink like I did here. I just did that to put the first layer down. You will need to work each one. So let's do this next. Again, let me put the pin on this side so you can see it. I'm just stroking very lightly towards the center of that bubblegum pink and then immediately dipping my brush into the fabric medium and spreading it out and blending. So super easy, very, very easy actually. And I think it has a similar look to what you can get with pencils. All right, you can actually do combinations of colors, but I try to keep them staggered because I think if you look at these blues right here, I started out with light blue, medium blue, and believe it or not, next to this black, there's actually kind of a navy. It's almost, almost impossible to see, but it does lend a blended effect to it, even though all you're doing is you're coloring the individual rows in different shades of blue from light to dark. All right, so one last one to show you and that is actually, again, using the fabric medium. I'm going to come in here in this center, and I'm going to put a little... I'm not worried that my brush already had color on it. Um, I'm actually going to be using um, some of those same colors because I want to get kind of, again, a blended effect. So I put my fabric medium down first. I'm going to grab my lemon yellow. I'm going to put a bunch of lemon yellow in the center. I'm going to come along with, I think, mm, let me go with this tan, uh, excuse me, the apricot again. Do a circle of apricot around there. And then last but not least, a nice thin line of tangerine, which is kind of a dark orange. Let me do this and do this rather carefully because this is where you can easily get out of line. Now it goes down pretty sharp, but just like we, we did earlier, just grab your brush and because there's fabric medium down there, you can actually soften that line and get a really nice blend. In fact, that's, that's, that's very, very nice. I like that. So there you have it. That's basically working with fabric markers. They're not difficult. Again, I like these Artezas. I do like Fabrico markers. Tulip is another one that is available. And I will tell you, frankly, they're fine as well. 
They may have a tendency to run out of ink quickly and they can dry out pretty easily as well. Speaking of drying out, you always want to leave your pens in a horizontal position. Do not stand them up like this. Uh, many of you who've been in class have, I always warn you to test your Fabrico markers, right? And make sure that one end isn't another color versus the other end. Well, it's finally dawned on me that one of the reasons why the markers were really dark at one end was I had them all standing up in their little uh, case in the studio, and so the ink was basically going all the way down into the tip. So word to the wise, always keep your fabric markers on a horizontal level and also keep them in a dark, cool place and please make sure their caps are on. That is the uh, other big reason for having them dry out prematurely. Well, as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and thanks for watching.